Welcome back, everyone. We're Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, hardware releases, the pleb sites. And now we are diving into the numbers. Let's do it. Number time. Brought to you by Noddle. They make some of the best Bitcoin nodes, like the Noddle Dojo, which I'm holding in my hands. The red means faster. Reclaim ownership of your money. Run Bitcoin Core, the Lightning Network at home. It's easy to use. It's privacy focused. Remove third parties from the equation completely. Remember, if you're not running your own Bitcoin node, you're running someone else's. Get yourself a noddle today. At the time of this recording, the block height is 732,030. The Bitcoin price, 40,325. Chain rewrite days, 741. Total public lightning capacity, 3,628.47. Moscow time, 2480 blocks to the happening, 107,970. And the Samurai Whirlpool unspent capacity, which is a collaborative spend or coin join service. It is not a mixing service. And the unspent capacity in that pool is 4,526.67. The numbers, Nico. We are just we are just hanging steady. Nothing's changing, dude. It, they they should just. I think Bitcoin is the stable coin, yeah. but without you know the control censorship and all that, right? It's just. Oh, I anyways. agree. Anyways, Phil, I got really interesting video. Let's check it out. It's one of the. It's one of the only mainstream legacy media reporters that actually does a pretty good job covering bitcoin and her name is to give her credit is mackenzie sigalos right um we, a lot of the articles that we've covered like the you know like the the estimated 10 percent hash rate still located in china also the you know the the afghanis using bitcoin right that is all thanks to her she wrote all those articles so shout out to her anyways i think she had a little bit on the cnnbc shitcoin world plus Bitcoin. Uh, let's check out what she has to say. I thought you guys would find it valuable. Okay, let's do this. So we're gonna try transferring Bitcoin via the Lightning Network from Miami and you know Bitcoin week here in Miami to Poland. So the first step is to download a crypto wallet. She's gonna download the Moon Wallet. Mana, create a new wallet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay, I just took a photo of it and I'm uploading. Yeah, so 50,000 sats, which is the equivalent of $23. So I'm about to send that over and then you just hit pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, oh. ти можеш просто повернутися на головний екран. Да, в мене є. Є. Yeah, yeah she, she, she got it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay, so then part two is going to a Bitcoin ATM to withdraw the money in Poland in local fiat currency. Тепер я захожу в So shout out to Mackenzie, awesome reporting, uh, dude. So anybody that says that Bitcoin is useless. Just remember that laugh from that Ukrainian refugee, essentially escaping the war, hiding in Poland, and it was a, it was an interesting laugh because it was an a, it was a laugh of joy, but an also a laugh of disbelief, right? And it was all done through Bitcoin. Hopefully, people will realize that the last step which is converting back to fiat, which is the currency that limited you in the first place is unnecessary, but that is the future. And it's absolutely beautiful. No censorship there. No one asking what the hell is the deal. 
it was direct peer-to-peer -peer, no going through governments no going through banks and yeah man it's it's absolutely beautiful and and that is what you know phil and i fight for peacefully every single day and i think that every single bitcoiner is taking part of this whether they realize it or not only if you take self-custody of your bitcoin right so this is the future in front of us we just kind of have to get through the bumpy fuck the government the government's gonna fight back back part anyways phil because they don't want to give up control of of printing their own money that's a lot of control right anyways phil what are your thoughts on that uh, are you you're kind of a little skeptical because i i know your facial expressions at this point hit me bro hit me okay not skeptical. Okay, great reporting, right? Great job, Mackenzie, like you said. Uh, for the tinfoil hatters out there, why $23? Like, pe people who, who follow the, you know, who follow conspiracy theories and uh, Discordianism will, will recognize the weird part about the fact that it's, for some reason, 23 Why not 25 Anyways, just saying, very strange, the number 23 well, tends what is, to pop okay, up. Okay, what, what no, is no, I, I can't even go down that rabbit hole. It's going to have to stay as a mystery, and the people who decide to start digging into the no, law no, of No, but now you said it. What the no. fuck is 23? Is no, that some that's demonic right. shit? Like, I have no idea. That's the problem. That, that, uh, that's the weird thing. You'll, just, you'll notice, and then once you see it, you can't unsee it, okay? But oftentimes in media, the number 23 is used, okay? Or variations of it, 23, 32, the number 5. Anyways... I digress. Besides that, okay. Besides my weird, Phil stupid knows, tinfoil hat he's stuff. He's not telling us, and that's <laughs> that's that's upsetting. Anyway, no. Besides the weird tinfoil hat stuff, okay. That was extremely powerful, and after the experience that I have been going through over the last three weeks, trying to get money from Canada here to the U.S., seeing that lady do that so quickly really makes me happy, and really upsets me that we've let the system get to where it is right now. <laughs> Why don't you because, uh, give a little little example of because I know you you okay. told you, you told the story of of you know the 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 bank uh, crediting you more money and that you should but why didn't you tell tell everybody kind of your experience of you know moving your money from uh, because you immigrated to the U.S. moving your yes. money from Canada to the U.S. how has that been how has that okay. process been. So this has been actually, uh, in terms of banking, it's been one of the worst experiences I've ever had because I'm being limited by the, the bank itself. So just to give people an idea, um, as having like a normal uh, bank account, right? I don't have any you know, special kind of privileges. It's just a you know, standard bank account. I, I link to an investing account, right? Where I could buy stocks in Canada. And essentially, if I wanna wire money from that bank account, I can only wire a maximum of $2,500 per day Canadian. And the interesting part is it's uh, the fee is a minimum of $10. So that means the fee could be higher, $10 for every 2,500, okay? Now, instead, what I've done, okay, because I don't feel like going through this and uh, not to divulge the amount of money, okay? Um, but, you know, let's just say it's like a few thousand, you know, it's like, uh, you know, Let's say let's say twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Okay, um, I can use an, what's called in Canada an interact transaction. Okay, and there it's two thousand dollars, but it's completely free. So what I did was was that I set up a bull Bitcoin account uh, because I am still a Canadian resident. I still have you know all my paperwork and everything. Um, so I set up a bull Bitcoin account, and that way I transfer the money from my Canadian banking account to the bull Bitcoin account. And from there I buy Bitcoin and just send it to a Bitcoin address and that's it. And it comes right over. It's nice and simple and I don't have to deal with any other crap. And to send it to an address, if I decide to do an express transaction, it literally costs me between 65 cents and a dollar for every $2,000 Canadian that I send. So we are talking magnitudes, okay? We are talking 10 times less fees to send the exact same money and not deal with their shit. Because as Nico alluded to, I've had several problems in this process. When I tried to sell my, after I sold my stocks and I had to request because I couldn't do it myself, I had to actually call in to the bank and request that they move my funds to my checking account. They screwed up and they instead withdrew that amount from my checking account and moved it to a, my investing account, which is impossible because I don't have that money there. So interestingly enough, this goes to the rules for thee and not for me thing, because the bank between itself 
simply went ahead and and moved over thirty thousand dollars that i didn't have and then proceeded to charge me a fee for not having that money so i had to argue with them about this okay so th this has been an absolutely horrendous experience keep in mind okay if had i have uh, maybe tried to feed my family and had gone into my overdraft. I have a $2,000 overdraft on that account. Had I tried to go over that $2,000, they would have blocked me. But because it was their institution going to their institution, they allowed an entire rule break to occur. And all they do is apologize and, you know, with a click of a button, change the numbers and all gets better. That should scare the shit out of everyone. That really should scare everyone. Anyways, I, I could keep on going about this story, Nico. You you know because I tell you all the time, it's not even over yet. <laughs> it, it, no, and it, and it's absolutely terrifying because and, and you were you were actually the one that told me this. If if they limit you so hard, is it really your money? Is it really really your money? Because the way that they're really acting, they're really acting as if that's their money. And if you behave nicely as a good little citizen and you eat your bugs like you're told. Then maybe, maybe you can have access to your money, but only in small quantities because over 2,500 then you could become an economic terrorist somehow. And if you're really that nefarious, you might be buying a lot of bounce bouncy castles, right, Phil? So yeah, man, it's it's absolute clown world. This is what we mean by the peaceful revolution. This is what you are fighting for peacefully every time you buy Bitcoin and you take it into self-custody. You are defunding their evil system of exclusion that gets to decide if you're entitled to use money or not based on where you happen to be born. And that's really, really messed up. But anyways, Phil, it's time for The Daily Fail. Brought to you by Amber App. Check them out. Amber.app. Low fees, fair spreads, smart automation. You can stack the shift. The link is down below. Amber. The smart way. Stack sets. All right, guys, it's been a while since we've, uh, you know, since we've taken a look at some some funny rug pulls. I know it's not funny for the people who got rug pulled, but I digress. Here we go. April 11th, 2022. What are we taking a look at here? Still sleeping on elephant money? Take a look at this. This is an ad from elephant money. Introducing the, the shit coin where you can only buy tops. Three insanely bullish reasons why elephant money token keeps going up. Bullish reasons. Here we go. Utility. Number two, the biggest elephant money whales are owned by the platform. I don't know what that means. I know it's bad, but they're saying it's good. Number three, the community. The community. It's not just a bunch of paid shills. Oh, oh what happened here? Well, look oh, at that. This is April 12th. Second. The actual, the, they're running out of names. They're running out of names. Oh, look they're at this. Good. They're running out of names, bro. Elephant. Oh, man. That, that's sad. Minus 87% the next day. The next <laughs> day after they told you to buy the token, after they shilled the token, here we go. Minus 87%. What happened? What happened? Oh. Oh, gosh. Look, right after they told you to buy it. Rug pull time. Hackers attack. Elephant money. DeFi platform. They steal over $11 million, Nico. That's right. Elephant Money, the DeFi protocol behind the Elephant Token, has said hackers have stolen 11.2 million worth of Binance coin. There's a prominent team that were aware of weaknesses and stood by and did nothing at your expense, even after I and other community members asked them to disclose. So check this out, people. That's right. This is someone else's fault. Right. This isn't the fact that they that the creators of this made a garbage platform that could easily be rug pulled through the same mechanisms that rug pull all DeFi shit coins. No, this is this is the few people who who knew about this problem that that didn't say anything. It's really their fault that everybody got rug pulled. It was a traditional price manipulation attack in which the attackers borrowed wrapped Binance coin. Here we go in a flash loan 
and traded it for thousands of elephant tokens. Oh my gosh, no way. Another flash loan, another rug pull. You got to love it, right? Any yeah. thoughts before we uh, any thoughts before we dive into the uh, the next one here cuz the next one's going to get uh, it's going to get pretty muddy. I'm concerned because the shit corners are running out of all the good names, right? You, well, know, you, you don't like elephant coin. I know uh, that's what I'm token. trying to say. Elephant dude. money. Elephant money. They're I'm sorry. Going, they went through kid, they went through transhuman one, they went through baby token. Right, avalanche. Right, they're gonna run out of nouns. That's just that's just a fact. They are going well, Nico, to. Are they gonna go to adjectives after? What about the elephant token whales? Mm. I want you to think about that. Those are the people. I mean, you you read that, right? Those were one of the reasons to buy this platform, yeah. right? To, yeah. to buy the shitcoin. Yeah, the whales yeah. hold the majority. Uh, okay. well, the All elephant right. elephant whales wrecked the elephants. There was an elephant in the room, and it wrecked everyone in the room. Huh? <laughs> sure did. All right. Well, now we're gonna now we're gonna wreck our searches. Here we go. The embarrassment oh. that is Duck Duck Go. That's right. You knew I'd have to bring this up, right? All right. So at 402 payment wreck. That's right. Shout out to you, bud. Great Bitcoiner. Here we go. Delete at Duck Duck Go. Indeed, you are correct. It really sucks. I enjoyed that platform for a long time. Installed it on my phone too. I was so happy that I what I thought was a platform where my search results weren't being censored where I thought anyways I digress let's let's dive into this uh, let's dive into this shit show DuckDuckGo CEO Gabriel Weinberg has announced that the search engine will begin purging all independent media outlets from the platform and will replace them with trusted mainstream in brackets corporate owned media outlets instead that's right, corporate-owned media outlets. So this isn't the first, this isn't the beginning of the censorship from DuckDuckGo. If we go back to March 10th, 2022, which really isn't that long ago, it's a little bit over a month and five days, alternative search engine DuckDuckGo will censor sites associated with Russian disinformation. Now, this isn't the reason why we're pointing this out. Buried in this article, is some very interesting signal because you have to think to yourself, why, why does Gabriel Weinberg, why does the CEO mention this? And why is a quote unquote privacy centric search engine, why are they censoring search results? What's behind this? Well, let's dive into this article. That's right. I had to scroll down a whole lot to get to this point right here. So we're going to talk about the investments, the investments in DuckDuckGo, right? Because you always got to follow the money. Who invests in them? The Inquirer stated that Weinberg had boasted of the company receiving a litany of high profile new investors, such as Tim Berners Lee, the Oxford trained Boston based computer scientist credited with inventing the Internet's World Wide Web. Mitch Kapoor, founder of Mozilla. Right. And we saw what Mozilla is doing with the uh, the ESG coins. OK. And Brian Acton, founder of WhatsApp, which was acquired by Facebook in 2022. Now, this is the this is the signal right here. Berners Lee or Tim Berners Lee is a listed agenda author for the globalist block World Economic Forum. So there you go. And keep in mind, right? He's he's an agenda author for them. So he creates literature for them and is a major investor for DuckDuckGo. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's loose. It is loose. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, why are all why is it that every single organization, regardless of its loose or not loose affiliation to the World Economic Forum, why do these organizations all seem to be the enemies of freedom and the enemies of Bitcoin? What is it? And the only tie that we seem to have is the World Economic Forum in every single one of them. I digress. Dude, spot on. Like always, um, it's just it, it, this is the great battle of our time, right? This is what you know. I said this at the Bitcoin conference. I'm going to say it right now. This is narrative trench warfare, right? The official sources, the official institutions are a lot easier to capture than, uh, you know, independent millions and millions of billions upon independent content creators spouting out the truth, right? So you have the establishment 
enabled by the Cantillian effect, the fiat system, trying to essentially control the narrative, control what people think, right? But the internet is making it very difficult for them to do so. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to capture every single platform, whether that's YouTube, whether that's Google, right? And the DuckDuckGo, people were just fleeing Google to use DuckDuckGo because of how biased it was. And now, slowly but surely, what I said a month ago when they first started censoring stories about Russia, hiding behind the moral virtue, of course, there's a slippery slope to censorship. And of course, they start there. It's going to keep going. It's going to get worse. So you know what sucks for them, though? Someone else will just build another platform and they're going to have to go and do it again. Right. So it's a game of whack-a-mole for them. And I don't know how long they could keep this up because there will come a day, whether it's five years from now, whether it's 10 years from now, whether it's 15 years from now, that the Bitcoiners are going to have enough wealth and influence, right? And then by just following their own incentives are going to be funding for freedom platforms, right? We're seeing something similar with what's happening with Elon's attempt to acquire Twitter, even though he's offering, you know, a 38% pre- premium to acquire the platform. All he the sucks. All the corruption is just coming out of the woodwork and they're just attacking. Why is it they're attacking it? Because they cannot give up control of the public square. That if they give up control of the public square, all those narratives that they try to paint, all the, the way that they they just brainwash the NPCs, that ability to do that is, is severely diminished in a freedom of speech environment. Now, here's the thing, right? And as Bitcoiners, I think we fundamentally believe this. If it's centralized, it can be captured. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special, because it doesn't matter who you are, how much Bitcoin you hold, right, which is what proof of stake is. You don't have influence over Bitcoin and you can't decide what speech, also known as transaction, is okay or not. So and I forget who said this, right? Um, Companies or networks can't be censorship resistance, but protocols can't, right? So, yeah, man, this is just this is just it's a sad, sad world. And these maniac central panners of the World Economic Forum, dude, like they're going full at it. Right. And if that doesn't make you want to buy Bitcoin and opt out even more, uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I, you know, as, as you were, as you were explaining that, I was thinking of, I was thinking of one thing, right? I was just thinking about the money printing and how this enables this. So one of the things is, is that we constantly have to seek alpha in our current system, right? And seeking alpha is seeking profit. Okay. So we have no choice but to seek alpha because the money is worth less and less and less. So even the even the organizations with the best of intentions, right? Unless they are entirely independently funded, okay or independently wealthy organizations they are at some point going to take money from somebody that has less than noble aims with that organization and as soon as they do that they there's a seat at the table for that person and that person or group now has a voice and and now has an opinion as to how the business gets done right like i mean look i worked for a public company uh you you answer to the board of directors You know, at the end of the day, like, yeah, the people they put in front of me is the CEO, right? That's who they put in front of us. But the CEO answers to the board of directors. Okay, so I I just look, you know what? I I know that people made a comment, right? Because Elizabeth Stark was on the World Economic Forum thing, but she was, uh, you know, she was really listed there. Um, as, as like just a random person, not even a contributor, right? Because they gave an award to lightning labs for, you know, whatever innovation, but these other people, every single time we point out these, these people, they all seem to be like, this guy's an agenda contributor. You know, the, the lady that sits on the board of directors for the Ethereum foundation is the head of their global blockchain you know, council or committee, like this isn't just like some random person, you know? So I don't know why these people are there. I mean, I guess I can, obviously I could say, I know why they're there. They're there to push their stupid, ridiculous agenda. But I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that 
I don't understand how nobody else is calling this out over and over again. I can't believe that people are just silently sitting idly by. Yeah. You it's know, crazy, man. It's it's crazy. It's sad. But, you know, like we always say, in a world full of darkness, Bitcoin is always there. The shining orange light of truth. But anyways, Phil, there was an open source. No, there wasn't. It's time for... Nico's at the end of the show. The Daily Meme Review. <laughs> the Daily Meme Review is brought to you by Citadel 21. They are the best Bitcoin cultural zine. Every, every volume has different artwork. This is the artwork for volume 11 it's black and white this is the artwork for volume 10 and they're scarce there's only a thousand physical copies made per volume get your print of citadel 21 today before they run out all right everybody welcome to the meme review where we review memes because it's a bitcoin meme review and we review them and we give them scores but the scores are memes themselves first meme is brought to us by the the pleb king even though he would cringe if i called him that Pirate Beach Bum, and it is a Marco Rotho painting titled Yellow and Blue, sold at a New York auction for $46.5 million. Okay. Laundering really? money, you basically take something worthless and give it value. <laughs> That's pretty accurate, though. I mean, that is what that is. Let's be honest. Isn't that pinnacle fiat, though? Yeah, 46? yeah. No, this is. Yeah. I, dude, I get, listen, I buy art from Bitcoiners all the time. And that art, yeah, you know, but it's, it's, art. Just, it's, this not, is shit. It's, it's not cheap. Okay. But it's also not $46 million. <laughs> no, but it, it's also like full of symbolism. I mean, this is just useless nonsense. I guess art Sorry. is to the beholder, right? And that's why it's so hard for not them that to art. say. <laughs> that's that. There's no beholder there. That That's just a lie they tell themselves. Anyways, or maybe they're using it to launder money. But hey, remember, Bitcoin is the problem. Anyways, uh... I love this template. I'm a Bitcoiner, but you're not a psycho, right? <laughs> but you're not a psycho, right? <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Shout out to Anders. Toxic happy hour. They, they hold some of the best spaces yeah. in the industry. Check this out. Frida Hoddle. Know how one should orange pill. How I tried orange pill. <laughs> Absolutely great. This is true. <laughs> um, is by J. Ropper. Go spend your Bitcoin. I will use my newly regulated stable coins 1,200%. A CPI, Central Bank Digital Currency. It's true. This is what I always tell you guys. You will only find salvation in Bitcoin. The cryptocurrencies, they'll pretend, they'll give you a false illusion of that because they're not sufficiently decentralized. Anyways, I want to improve Twitter and reduce spam, <laughs> Lightning Network, Shill Dodgy Coin, and it's Elon. That's that's very funny. All right, last one by the Yellendary, the, the legendary Yellow Muppet. Yellow, yellow Muppet. And we have ICO Offender 2. Craig is a potato. Hello. No. Psycho friend. And let's check it out. And this is from the movie The Shining. Awesome short source material. Let's check it out. Bitcoin. It's going up forever, Lord. This entire idea of like 60% dominance is bullshit with this little stupid, right? Like, it's stupid. It's not 60% dominant. It's like 96% or 95% dominant, right? Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. There's no second best. There's no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset that's called Bitcoin, right? right? There's, right? There's, there's no second best. best. Okay. Oh, man, that is absolutely hilarious. Shout out to the legendary Yellow. Very well oh, done. man. Very, very well done. Absolutely hilarious. For people that don't know, I'll pull up the the magazine title or the newspaper title. The New York, uh, the New York Post <laughs> basically called all Bitcoiners psychos, according to scientists. Unnamed scientists, but according to scientists. Anyways, I'm going to give it a, a Matrix referenced meme. And if you have watched the movie, the original, of course, The Matrix, you will understand. And I will say, Phil, they have turned us into this. Battery. <laughs> Very well done. Very well done. Okay, so we are somehow strangely in tune uh, today. But before I give my score, I just want to give a shout out to TC. We could not review your, your meme because it is apparently... 
inappropriate for YouTube, but we loved it and we laughed, so I do apologize. Anyways, for the memes that we were allowed to review, okay, I am going to give it this extremely rare, okay, Bitcoin take on a clockwork orange. And this is a sticker made by Swede Toshi, who for some reason disappeared from Twitter, who should come back, please. Yes, this is awesome. And what it reads is a proof of work orange. Mm. Very cool. It's awesome. Very, very nice. And yes, shout out to Sweet Toshi. Sweet Toshi. He is missed. I have that same sticker. But unlike Phil that keeps everything in mint condition because he actually really is a psychopath. Um, I stick mine on the wall. But anyways, guys, we want to know if you agree with our scores, you disagree. Let us know down in the comment section. Comment, comment, comment. Make sure to subscribe to us on alternative video platforms because we do talk shit about the World Economic Forum. Like Rumble.com and our personal favorite, BitcoinTV.com. They don't censor there because Bitcoin TV. And make sure to join our awesome Telegram group and link us some dank, dank, dank Bitcoin memes to review so we can review them on the Bitcoin meme review. Because it's a Bitcoin meme review and we need memes to review because then what would it be if there's no memes to review? Would it just be a review of nothing? Hmm. Anyways, Phil, it's time for the Daily News. Brought to you by CryptoCloaks.com. They make the best 3D printed Bitcoin merch. Like the famous 3D printed Bitcoin grenade art sculpture opens up. You put your favorite hardware wallet in there. You can also get this in any custom color your heart desires. You want to make... The white orange, you could do that, but only on CryptoCloaks.com, and you can take advantage of the link down below for 5% off. All right, everybody. Uh, we were supposed to have a um, pretty awesome guest today. We were supposed to have Natalie Burnell, and we were going to cover the Jack Mahler's announcement with her today, but she had to reschedule. We have her on, I think, for mid-May. But anyways, let's get to it. This is uh, Jack Mahler's being Jack Ballers, and uh, let's check out what he did and uh, then we'll we'll go over the article we're in sunny chicago we're gonna walk into a grocery store and buy some coke over tour a card network is not going to process this transaction bitcoin's open monetary network is going to process this transaction let's go hello hey can i check out each of these separately sure. i'll do the coke first let's buy some coke over tour ladies and gentlemen boom Open payment standard. This grocery store is showing an open payment standard to receive dollars in their cash register. I could use any Lightning wallet I want. I'm gonna go with Zap, which is connected to my Lightning node running over Tor at my house. So I simply hit send, scan the QR code, confirm by entering my PIN, and Bitcoin is leaving my node over Tor as dollars enter her cash register. Boom, I'll go with the peanuts next. Shout out Peanuts if you know, you know. And I would go with the one and only Cash App. 70 million Americans can do this. I'm simply going to scan the QR code again, enter my PIN, and confirm the Lightning payment. Money is leaving Cash App over an open payment standard and entering dollars in her cash register. Can I uh, use pay with QR code for that Bud Light? Thank you. We've also integrated for point of sale systems that are not interoperable and ability to pay with the QR code. So I'm going to present my QR code. Awesome, thank you. I have it programmed to open my Moon Wallet. I'm gonna confirm my PIN. I have the payment pulled up right here. I'm gonna send. Should be good? Yeah. Good to go? Yes, we're good to go. Freaking badass. Really, really awesome. Shout out to Jack making history like always let's get into a little bit of the details of it uh jack mauler stride integrating with world's largest uh <laughs> pos that's funny in this case it stands for proof uh point of sale um and point of sale essentially what that means right is at a restaurant right or at a convenience store when you pay with your debit card or when you pay with cash that is the point of sale that little verifone type of terminal that you see that is a pro point of sale right um, so anyways, it goes on to say you're going to be able to walk into a grocery store, uh, to Whole Foods, to Chipotle. If you want to use a lightning node over Tor, you do that. Mahler said on Bitcoin 2022 and any online merchant that uses Spotify can accept payments 
without the 1949 Boomer credit card network. Receive it instantly, cash final, no intermediary, no 3% fee. Um, the announcement is a major innovation in merchants' ability to interact with the Bitcoin's network and users' ability to privately and permissionless make permissions throughout the U.S. Now they will be able to take advantage of the cheap, instant, open access offered by Bitcoin. An image shared by Maulers as part of the presentation listed McDonald's, Walmart, Walgreens, and more U.S. franchises as places where the strike integration will be usable. Maulers also emphasized that he is dedicated to protecting Bitcoin in the United States, reporting, I've been working with Senator Cynthia Lummis to make sure that the United States of America, we support this open, pay this open payment standard, and it isn't threatened by anybody else. And just to kind of, you know, back that up, Right, this was also announced during the Bitcoin conference. New, they say crypto, but it's really a Bitcoin only back super PAC. Um, and check this out the Financial Freedom Pack, also called the Bitcoin Pack, which was introduced by Bitcoin Magazine's Grant McCarthy, uh, McCarthy Friday, will support candidates that aim to defend and uphold the following rights of Bitcoin ownership in the united states the group has listed four candidates it currently supports and says more will be added in the coming weeks backing the bitcoin pack is another mccarthy launch organization the bitcoin advocacy advocacy project which will help the pack vote out any anti-bitcoin politicians like brad sherman and elizabeth warren right so this is what i've this is what we success we correctly predicted many months ago we said bitcoin is going to get political and there is going to be a launch of a bitcoin only pack now i can't i i have a little bit of insider information but i can't reveal it but let's just say very predominant bitcoiners that you guys all know by name have already donated to this pack um so it's it is uh, accumulating a lot of support and how the wash how the the swamp in washington dc works is it works by lobbying effort right so i'm glad that bitcoin has its own lobbying arm rather than relying on the coin center because as good as jerry brito and those guys of coin center have done unfortunately they also have to support shit coins as well right and sometimes that causes misalignments let's say right so this is very good news and this is absolutely historical right like jack mentioned or that like how that article mentioned briefly we've been using the same second layer fiat technology for a very long time right we've been using essentially credit cards first they were stamped out physically i don't know if you guys remember that that's why your credit cards have little indentations where the numbers are right um that's what they're for those indentations right to be stamped in physical machines now those physical machines don't really exist anymore now that now it's all through an internet but as jack Mahler said throughout his presentation n that innovation hasn't really changed right and that is what that that's why it's such a big deal what he's doing because what he's doing is essentially bypassing that network altogether and using the bitcoin network directly and if you don't want to pay directly in bitcoin or let's say your merchant doesn't take bitcoin as payment you could pay in bitcoin that that merchant terminal does the automatic conversion and the merchant gets dollars in their account immediately right so again it wasn't as impactful as the year before the year before had a lot more umph but if you actually pay attention to what it represents it's a very very big deal this is going to change everything but you guys also need to have patience right because these payment networks right so let's let's focus on the on the credit card one right or the debit card one that took decades right to develop I think this is going to be a lot faster because we are transitioning into the information age, but it's still going to take some time. And I'm going to give you a little example of a personal experience. And actually, Phil was with me. We went to um, like a taqueria, like a little taco shop in Collins on Miami Beach to, to get some food. And uh, to our surprise, right, uh, this place accepted uh, Bitcoin, accepted Lightning, accepted the main chain. And, you know, first taco I paid with Fiat. And then the second I paid with Lightning just to see, you know, how the experience is. Now, I saved time in the sense that I didn't have to pull my wallet out. I had my phone out, you know, with my with my moon wallet, my mun wallet, you know, scammed it. But what I noticed with the teller 
is that she she seemed a little bit confused and unfortunately we couldn't use the the normal point of sale device she had to pull out an ipad from behind the counter right i would want to see in the future like what jack Mahler showed that it's all in the same go but i think i think there was a little bit of rehearsal in that video to be honest you know there was music added right the transitions were very suspiciously smooth so obviously you know he is a ceo of a company he is supposed to be a salesman but this is these are things that are just going to continually continuously get better over time phil what are your thoughts on all this yeah, so I'm liking I, I'm liking the fact that he mentioned the open payment standard. I think it's very important for those of us that pay attention to payment systems every time we go to a store. Like Nico, like you mentioned, the Verifone, right? There's just a few companies such as Verifone and Moneris and a few others, at least in North America, that offer these services for pay terminals. And the only networks that they offer you access to are really just the Visa and MasterCard networks and in some cases, American Express or Discover. Believe it or not, um, you know, I've said this in the past, uh, over 60, approximately 60% of the uh, the payment networks are owned by MasterCard, okay? Or I should say 60% of the payment network is owned by MasterCard. Approximately 40% is Visa. And I know that adds up to 100, but believe it or not, it's always fluctuating. And in that 10% is where you've got American Express, you've got Discover, and you've got like three other other little you know crappy players so the truth is is that it is almost a monopoly okay that that's my point the point is it's almost a monopoly it shouldn't be like this okay um i have to say i the fact that there's a different terminal required this is one of those things that makes things a little bit more difficult and b believe me the payment processors understand this um but they don't give a shit because it is a closed system after all okay the terminal of the future is going to have bitcoin and lightning but you're also going to be able to pay on your fiat rails that's the difference those systems are meant to keep others out mm -hmm. that is you know that's kind of the point of that the other piece to this when it comes to the jack mauler's uh presentation um I like at the end when he pays for the beer that he bypasses the terminal altogether and just does it with the QR code scanner. That is something that makes things a little bit easier. That's a better route, I think. I think that if if we're going to concentrate on one method over another, I think we should concentrate on getting out of the terminal altogether. Um, because the terminal is really a central point. Uh, it's like a chokehold, right? Because if the company that owns the terminals doesn't want to list you well there you go now you're screwed you know so this is the, that that's kind of the uh that's kind of the problem um the last piece to this is the packs right the you know the the the, the political packs so i i'm always torn i'm always torn between whether we really need this or we don't part of me says okay these are good because they help bring awareness to the masses unfortunately um, there's very, that's not, that's not at all what they do. No, uh, no you don't think so? No, no. Th those things are literally to lobby politicians. That's, that's their single but fucking that's, reason for existing. But that's the point though. They lobby the politician and in doing so, the politician adds their messaging for the masses. Does it not? Mm, sometimes not really, dude. It's literally about oh. sweetening the deal for the politician, essentially telling him, Hey, there are consequences for you if you vote against this right um whereas what happened with the infrastructure bill because that infrastructure wasn't set in place what to use senator lummis's reference the, the treasury was able to get a jump on the industry right but with this pack in place what it essentially says hey any politician that really steps out of line you better hope you have an opposing pack backing you right um so it, it's kind of more so for the politicians right to oh, kind of put okay. a check on them rather than lobbying the public right that's a whole other aspect of it you know and that's and and, and, and you by saying that really highlights how this fucking functional the system is that it's really the lobbying parties that run washington rather than 
the people, right? Yeah, because it's interesting because um, when I was working, at, you know, in my previous, you know, in my previous job, the the goal of the pack was to help convince the employees to vote in the direction of what the company wanted. So for me, I, I just I figured, you know, that this is also similar, but it's completely the opposite. <laughs> Maybe, Anyways, maybe very that, interesting. Maybe that that's a function of it, right? But from my understanding, right? Yeah. You know, we all have different life experiences. From my understanding, it's more so to you know tap on the shoulders of those politicians, right? And then obviously, what it said there support politicians that are running against the anti Bitcoiners like Elizabeth Warren, like Brad Sherman, right? Mm. So, but anyways, moving on to some more positive news. I think the Jack <laughs> Mauler thing was absolutely bonkers. Let's see. It's it's going to be slow and tedious. Um, anyways, check this out. This was an enormous, huge deal, which we covered yesterday, but Zoom fucked up. We apologize, guys. Intel launches new Bitcoin mining chip, the block scale. Uh, Intel announced details for its new bit, new Bitcoin mining chip, the Intel Blockscale ASIC, which seeks to increase energy efficiency of proof-of-work mining through the company's decades of research, develop in, development in, in related areas, as per a re press release sent to Bitcoin Magazine. Anyways, each block scale ASIC chip will deliver up to 580 gigahashes per second of hash rate with up to 26 joules per terahash of power efficiency and support up to 256 integrated circuits per chain. Therefore, and this is the signal guys, pay attention. Therefore, a mining system consisted, consisted of 256 Intel block scale ASIC chips would supposedly output roughly 148 terahashes and consume about 386 watts of power. The flagship air-cooled mining system of the current global market leader, Bitmain, outputs 140 terahashes with an energy consumption of 310 watts, resulting and 21.5 joule terahash of power efficiency. So, if you believe the Intel guys, right, the, you know, technically the block scale ASIC miner is more efficient than the Bitmain miner. However, right, the, the block scale has a slightly higher hash rate, around 8 eight terahashes more, but it does consume 860 watts more, 850 watts more than the Bitmain miner, which ha which you know mines about 140 terahashes, but only consumes 3,010 watts. Now, what's really impressive is the fact that Bitmain has had like an eight year head start on, on Intel, and that is absolutely bonkers. And another part, which is why I'm even bringing up this article in the first place, is the fact that one of our major concerns, and we've brought this up on the channel before, is there was an over-concentration of mining manufacturing coming out of a country that is hostile to Bitcoin, which is China, which is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. They banned Bitcoin mining within their borders, so it was kind of a point of weakness, and it you know it definitely uh, made me stay up at night a couple nights, right? The fact that most uh, mining manufacturers come from China, like Bitmain, like What's Miner, like InnoSilicon. Now that Intel has not only stepped into the into the fray, but has also stepped into the fray with a miner that is better or even equivalent to the S19, uh, the S9, right? The S19. So that is that is very good news. And I know that um, as shout out to Adam back of, of Blockstream, I know that they're working on their own sol solution. They accompanied, a co they acquired a company called Spondoodles and also uh, Jack Dorsey, of the block and cash app also said that he wants to make an ASIC. So this is very good. Like we've always said, guys, this is the beauty of capitalism. When companies compete, the consumer wins. So this is very good for Bitcoin. This is awesome. This is further the centralization, not only of the hash rate, but also mining manufacturing. So very, very good news. I think this is the best news of the day so far. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to agree. And not only that, right, but... Think of it like this. Intel's been making chips for well over 40 or 50 years, okay? Uh, they have some of the most advanced IP when it comes to chip making and the processing. So 
it's inevitable that AMD is going to follow suit because they are not going to let, because look, right now, the rest of the industry, they're just looking at Intel. Okay. They're looking at Intel and they're saying, all right, let's see what happens. But you'll see when Intel inevitably, when their miners inevitably provide number one, a profit for Intel's bottom line, that is non-negligible. And number two, miners start back like standing behind their product behind the intel product you're gonna see amd come on board and i think that you're even gonna see nvidia um possibly start to come out with um with asic miners you know because right now nvidia graphics cards get used for shitcoin mining you know but these guys man like you think nvidia makes the most powerful they, they make the most powerful graphics processors in the world you don't think that can be changed that could be switched over to asic anyways i'm just saying again this is one of those things just like when the internet happened we didn't really have a good grasp of how big uh, and and not only that but like how monumentous the companies would be that come out of the internet like people don't realize you know adobe just for example, okay, if you held Adobe shares from, from the day that they, they IPO'd or something, you're sitting on something like 52,000% growth, okay? Who would have thought that something like Adobe would provide that for you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. You know, Microsoft is the same type of thing. eBay is the same type of thing. Like, nobody would have thought these things that all of a sudden, all of this would become integral in our lives. So now here we are. We're at the Bitcoin phase, okay? We're at this point in history. We're at this point in the timeline. We don't understand exponentially what this is going to mean in terms of business, in terms of competition, in terms of energy efficiency, like all of this. I'm bullish. I stacked twice today, Nico. Bullish, ultra bullish. <laughs> Just twice. to make you guys even more bullish, look at what has happened in the last two years, right? Now you could use Bitcoin to shop at Walmart, Chipotle, any, all the thousands upon thousands of of, of 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 terminals that Shopify supports. We have Bitcoin becoming legal tender in a country. We also have public companies like Tesla, like The Block, like MicroStrategy putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. We also have ExxonMobil, one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world, mining Bitcoin directly to offset the flared gas into the atmosphere. And now you have one of the most historic computing companies companies in, in the history of the world, Intel making Bitcoin miners themselves. This has all happened in the last two years. If that doesn't make you bullish about Bitcoin, I don't know what will, right? So if you look at the price right now, look at all the things that I've said, do you think that's just going to stop or do you think that is going to accelerate, Phil? How long before the next gas producer? decides to do what Exxon just did. Like, how long do you think we have to wait, realistically? It's, it's inevitable. Months? It's inevitable. It's, it's, exactly. just, it's just like Robin Hood, <laughs> where they added lightning withdrawals and withdrawals in general. They were forced well, yeah, no, to do that. They were forced to do that because their competitors were doing it, right? Same as Exxon. If Exxon has an edge, right, over those other guys and Bitcoin is what's giving them that, that edge, they're going to be forced either to put it on their balance sheet or to use that flared gas to mine more of it. That was a good episode. Phil, there was an open source software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases. Brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out. CypherSafe.io. Look, one of my biggest worries is storing my seed phrase. I know that everybody feels this way. If you've got a hardware wallet, we've got you covered. Store your seed in the Cypher wheel or the all new Cypher grid. They both come with a tamper resistant wire, but the grid comes with a punch tool. We've got BTC Pay Server 1.4.8 that was released. It's down below in the show notes. Guys, you know the deal. Don't forget to check us out. We drop our episodes on audio only platforms. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and if you want to stream us sats, fountain.fm, you could stream us sats through Breeze. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, that was our show. Before we go, I want to give a very special shout out to our clothing sponsor, RepHard.com, represent LTD. Phil and I wear the hoodies every single day, and you can take advantage of the link down below to get 10% off anything off the representltd.com score. Guys, if you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button. And of course, you want to continue hearing the Bitcoin news from the plea pleb perspective and the catastrophic fails of all the shit corners, central bankers, 
evil World Economic Forward people, definitely consider subscribing to Simply Bitcoin, and we will see you on Monday, guys, for a brand new episode. What I love about this show is that I get the last word. It's actually psychos who stick stickers. Not sorry. No, it's not.